Today I'm out here in Carlsbad, California, and Toyota has brought along one of their excellent cutaways of their new ETNGA full electric vehicle platform. This obviously has a few design components borrowed from other TNGA vehicles, but this platform was developed from the ground up to be an electric vehicle platform. Now, the heart of it, as you can see right here in the floor, this is where the battery is located. This is not a 100% skateboard-like design. It's instead a unibody vehicle with a bolt under the floor battery. So the floor was designed for the battery pack right as you can see it. There are a few things you'll notice in this cutaway here. The cooling channels are these blue channels right down here at the bottom. This is a liquid cooled and liquid heated battery. You can see that there is the battery protection tray right under there. We then have the coolant lines. We then have another protection element there. And then we have the individual battery modules right above there. So the cooling system in this battery setup is a little bit different than we find, for instance, in GM's new Ultium platform, where each individual module has very aggressive cooling uh, there. That's possibly one of the reasons that this vehicle does not DC fast charge quite as quickly as some of the competition because of the design of the cooling system in this car. From this angle, you can also see why so many EVs have a very minor hump. It's all because they want to protect these high voltage cables. It's best if these are in this little cutaway area right here in this sort of pseudo tunnel that also adds a little bit of rigidity to the platform. And if they had routed those cables somewhere else, they would be a little bit longer, a little bit heavier, a little bit more expensive, of course, and not quite as protected as this central location. The ETNGA platform was not designed to have a front trunk like we find in some EVs out there. Instead, Toyota decided that they wanted a more pragmatic shape for the vehicle and they wanted a more compact front end design. So under here we find the DC to AC inversion stuff. We find the uh, AC level two charger. This is the AC level two charge connector right there that plugs into that charger module. A lot of parts commonality with other vehicles in Toyota's lineup is definitely seen in here. This has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger that is a little bit slow for a modern EV, and that's because the internals were basically borrowed out of one of their plug-in hybrids. Under that, we have one of two electric motors that we're gonna find in this platform to start with. In the all-wheel drive model, this is a 107 horsepower electric motor. In the front-wheel drive model, it's a 201 horsepower electric motor. In the upcoming Lexus electric crossover, we're going to get two of the 201 horsepower electric motors, it appears. Obviously, other motor combinations are possible later. So if Toyota wanted to give us, say, 300 horsepower, put the 201 horsepower electric motor in the rear, and have the 107 horsepower electric motor up front, they could definitely do that. One of the reasons we find symmetric electric motors in this vehicle is that it makes this a little bit more appropriate for off-roading. And that's quite logical because Subaru was also involved in the development of this platform. And that's why the Subaru Solterra also rides on this, shares the battery pack and shares the front and rear electric motors. But at this point in time, it doesn't look like the Subaru is gonna get the more powerful electric motor option or the front wheel drive version that we find in this. Now, interesting twist in the in between these two areas. A lot of folks have asked, what is this little module here? This was simply to enable uh, easier manufacturing at the plant there. Apparently the connectors and the way everything is connected, that just bolts together a little bit more easily. But you can see in this cutaway that there is a bit more room. If they wanted to actually extend the battery pack out, this battery pack could grow if they needed to without too much of a structural modification to the vehicle. Now, interesting twist, there are going to be two different battery packs in this vehicle. If you get the front-wheel drive model, then it's going to use a Panasonic battery pack. If you get the all-wheel drive model, the battery pack is manufactured by CATL. Now, Toyota has not been overly specific about the chemistry involved in their battery packs, but likely the two chemistries are different. The Panasonic pack that we find in the front-wheel drive model is going to support faster DC fast charging. That might be one reason that you might want to get the front-wheel drive model over the all-wheel drive model. That one's going to charge at a peak rate of 150 kW. If you get the all-wheel drive model with the CATL pack, it's only going to charge at 100 kW. If you want to know more about the Solterra or the BZ4X, there are complete reviews on the channel as well. BZ is the new direction for Toyota's electric vehicle platforms. This is going to be sort of a sub-brand. They're calling it Beyond Zero because these vehicles are not just about zero tailpipe emissions. Toyota is also interested in having these vehicles be the spearhead for other recyclable, renewable, and other sustainable practices when building cars, recycling cars, planning the content for the vehicle, etc. So if you want to know all of that sort of detail, check out those full reviews. In the meantime, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button if you haven't already done so. Find us over at Facebook, Instagram, all those other social places, and I'll see all of you next week.